hydropower, agriculture, transportation, commerce, recreation, all these things are great. But what about the fish? As we mentioned earlier, Pacific salmon are a part of our culture and we must protect them. Certain populations of sockeye, coho, and chinook salmon are listed as endangered or threatened in our region. Some of these populations are recovering, and many of us believe we can have both our current river system with the dams and a thriving Pacific salmon population. This philosophy comes from years of scientific research, fish passage improvements, and habitat recovery. Salmon don't care about state lines or international borders or time zones. They just go about doing their salmon thing. So it makes it complicated for us as a society to figure out how to effectively manage them as a species so that the local people benefit, but then also the, the salmon species benefits too. As a fisheries scientist, my job, my role is to help people think about fish when they're making decisions about the river system. And I really think that modern management of the Columbia Snake River System is a great example of win-win natural resource management. Just this past spring, they did testing of a new turbine design at Ice Harbor Dam, which is the lowest dam on the Snake River System. This new turbine that was designed with the latest science and engineering breakthroughs passes 98.5% of salmon safely. And at the same time, with those improvements in fish passage, they also gained a 4% gain in energy efficiency. To me, that's a great example of using technology to bring a win-win solution for natural resources, for salmon, but also for people. The money that we pay Bonneville goes to fish and wildlife programs. And so we've been taking fish and wildlife programs seriously for a long time. Fish bypass facilities that are improved at the dams over the years have been improved. Um, investments in hatcheries, in habitat restoration, um, research and development. You know, it, it all comes from electric ratepayers. We live in a fantastic place here in the Pacific Northwest. We have the amazing Columbia River system with the Snake and the Yakima Rivers joining into that system. We've got a large federal hydro complex on the Columbia and the Snake River. We have great agriculture. We've got it all here in central Washington. That's why I love living here. And I think that really with science-based modern management of natural resources, we really can have it all. As people and the rivers have learned to coexist, there's an element that's key to thriving fish populations. The Washington Department of Fish and Wildlife operates dozens of fish hatcheries around the state. These hatcheries help to populate fish throughout the region and lakes and rivers. Our team got a rare peek at a nearby fish hatchery and learned the vital role that these facilities play in our river ecosystem. So what's the purpose of a hatchery? The main goal of our agency is the conservation of those wild fish and their populations. And it's important that we continue the legacy of, of fish within our state because they've been around for years. Do hatcheries just raise fish for rivers? Um, no, hatcheries raise fish for lakes, uh, streams, uh, but most importantly, rivers. Uh, yes, we are located right next to the Columbia River, and a lot of the fish that we raise here go directly into the Columbia River. But these fish, for instance, are rainbow trout. These are all gonna go into lakes here in Eastern Washington that provide recreational trout opportunities. What we have here is some steelhead uh, that we're raising up right now to be released this spring. This is the size of our steelhead right now. They're just little guys. With salmon, we take the eggs in the fall and then we release them in the late spring, early summer. It's a long ways to the saltwater from our facility here. It's about 365 miles. It takes these fish about a month to get all the way to the saltwater from up here. But if you think about it, a month in a fish, 365 miles, you can do the math on how many miles they may travel each day. Columbia River's only right, right down there. It's really close. So all these fish coming into this structure are all returning Chinook and Steelhead. 
they smelled this water from the moment they got probably within five to 10 miles of the Columbia River when the, on their migration from the ocean to the fresh water. Um, they smelled this water and they knew exactly where they needed to come. One around the tail. There you go. Now you, now you got her. Yeah. So what kind of fish is this? That's a Chinook you're hanging on to, Callie. That's a great big female. Um, this is typical fish that returns to our hatchery facility. It's pretty big, isn't it? What is this one? That's a, that's a male Chinook too. Um, so we've seen both the male and the female. They're pretty lively, aren't they? So what happens after they spawn? So the salmon life cycle is they go to the ocean, spend a few years, return. They never go back. They spawn till they die. But those carcasses contribute greatly to our habitat, uh, other animals, uh, but they're key nutrients for the offspring. Wow, that's a beautiful fish, Joel. That's so awesome. That's a hatchery fish too. No, no adipose fin. That's, right. that's a great specimen of a steelhead here at the Ringgold Hatchery and, and most rivers here in Washington State as well. So how do the numbers look in the system? Well, the numbers are really good, Callie. A lot of people would say these are the good old days when it comes to salmon fishing. Um, steelhead populations aren't doing that great right now throughout the state of Washington. Salmon populations are doing well. It's kind of cyclic though. Some years are great for coho, not so good for Chinook. Other years are great for steelhead, not so good for coho or Chinook. It can really vary based on ocean conditions. You know, it, there's so many factors out there that play a role in the survival or the fitness of fish returning to the hatchery system or even to a, a, a wild system for that matter. So why is there so much research? You know, fish are important to Washington, Oregon, and the whole Pacific Northwest. Uh, it all starts right here at the hatchery. This research is important for forecasting future runs of different species of salmon to include coho, chinook, steelhead, sockeye, pinks, chum, and the list goes on, Kelly. There's so many different fish out there. People don't realize the opportunities that Washington has for fishing here, both in Eastern Washington and Western Washington. Benton PUD is dedicated to delivering reliable energy to all of our customers. But that's not all we do. We strive to provide education for all ages, to strengthen conservation, and promote reliable power sources. Being a part of the community we serve is a priority at Benton PUD. And that's why we are your trusted energy partner.